people of the internet. We are here coming at you live from the New York Summit. Uh, my name is Nikki. I'm a technical evangelist at AWS, typically on Twitch. I'm joined by some members of the EventBridge team and partners also of the EventBridge service. So if you missed that EventBridge launch or you wanted to hear more about it, this is the session to tune into. But before we get started, some introductions. Hi, I'm Trevor Dyke. I'm a product manager at AWS in the serverless team. Hello, I'm Kirk Punches. I'm the Senior Director of Cloud Alliances at PagerDuty. We're a digital operations management platform, so it's all about helping our customers reduce the business disruptions and improve the operational health so they can basically resolve issues faster. And we're excited to be part of this launch and integration with the EventBridge team. Awesome. We're excited to have you. And I'm Joe Abbott. I'm from Zendesk. I'm a Senior Platform Marketing Manager uh, at Zendesk, and uh, we're excited to be here as a part of the AWS ecosystem, and our customers are really excited about the partnership. Awesome. So what is EventBridge? Because in case you missed the keynote or you missed anything about EventBridge, can you tell us a little bit about what service was launched today? Sure, yeah. This morning at the keynote, uh, Werner announced uh, Amazon EventBridge, which we just launched today. It's, it's live. You can go check it out. And it's a serverless event bus service that makes it easy to connect uh, real-time application data from a variety of sources, uh, your own applications, SaaS applications, and AWS services. And we actually announced direct integrations with uh, 10 SaaS application partners, including... And two uh, the of them are on stage here. with me yeah. right now. That's right. So, you know, this sounds like oddly familiar. I'm, I'm feeling like this is CloudWatch events. How are you different? Um, you know, what, how is this a different service? Yeah, so actually this service builds on and extends CloudWatch events. Um, CloudWatch events is super popular, as you know, with yep. uh, our customers. And customers loved it so much that we added additional capabilities beyond the kind of monitoring and CloudWatch use cases that it's being used for today. Um, and we just gave it its own name to reflect that. So that's why we're calling it EventBridge. Um, but it's built on the same API and infrastructure. And any customers that are using CloudWatch events today, they'll get access to all that functionality. And if you already know those API calls, you're set. You're set. Cool. OK, so obviously the SaaS application integration is a big part of this launch. And we're really glad to have two of your launch partners on stage today. Um, so what was the value to your customers with integrating with EventBridge? So we have PagerDuty and Zendesk. Value to customers. Sure. Yeah, the value to our customers is what we were hearing is that you know, customers, we've got 350 integration partners, including Zendesk, and we also integrate with a number of AWS services. And you know, customers were spending time on manual configuration work, and really what they were telling us is, hey, we, we would love to be able to have you know, PagerDuty as a SaaS platform really operate more closely with AWS services. And what EventBridge really empowers our customers to do is not focus on the you know, manual configuration work. You know, they want their developers and teams focused on innovation and revenue generation. Right. That's exactly what EventBridge delivers. It just makes it super easy and reduces a lot of that friction to now send our data back in to EventBridge to fire off those event-driven workflows. Super cool. Joe? Yeah, so uh, just for, the, for those of you that don't know, Zendesk is a customer service and engagement platform. And what a lot of people don't know about Zendesk is we have a really thriving developer community. And a lot of that is because of our uh, uh, development philosophy when it comes to APIs. We have open APIs. We uh, usually publish all types of functionality within the products as external APIs. But our customers are testing the limits, especially our developers, uh, of what those APIs can do. So EventBridge represents kind of a new way to unlock real-time use cases for our customers that are related to customer service. Uh, customer experience, for example, retail customers who want to send uh, order shipment updates to their uh, customers, um, or financial services companies that want to look at fraud and account activity. Uh, this event bridge integration makes all those things much more uh, easy to set up for our developers and much more possible for uh, business users. Yeah, so like really easy to understand use case. Someone opens a support ticket on Zendesk, and then you have integration with EventBridge. It gets sent to your event bus, which then might target SNS, a Lambda, send that ticket to your email or your phone number so you get paged immediately um, about that ticket. Yeah, that's absolutely it. And that's what we've launched with today is ticket events. But we're really excited about being able to bring in more events from our different products and also custom events that customers want to store within our platform. Awesome. Well, event-driven architecture, I feel like, is like the latest buzzword I've been hearing like all the time. So why do you guys think that is? Like, Why do you think people are so, it's so popular now to build event-driven architecture or building with events? Yeah, so I mean, first of all, I want to just explain kind of what events are for those who don't know. So a really simple way to think about it, I think, is everyone has mobile phones and you get notifications from apps, like from Facebook or Instagram or whatever apps you're using. And events are like those, but for your apps instead of for you personally. So those 
events are getting published by SaaS applications like, like PagerDuty, and then your apps can just respond to those, those notifications in real time and take action. So, uh, so that's kind of what events are. Now, why event-driven architecture is becoming popular? It is becoming huge, and it's actually the way we build things inside Amazon, as you know. And some of the reasons are, first of all, it facilitates like really uh, independent teams. It facilitates microservice-based architecture with smaller yep. teams. Werner talked about that a bit in his keynote. Faster development. Faster development, more agile. Um, on top of that, it makes your apps more resilient and more, more ad, um, sorry, more resilient and more scalable. Um, if you build in this way with microservices, using events to communicate, it's just really a better way to build uh, to build applications. And you know, today a lot of people that are actually trying to interact with with SaaS applications, they're doing polling. Yep. So they're actually like making API requests to the app, and they have to continuously Check. poll, say, hey, any changes? Any changes? It's just not efficient. So event driven is just the way to go. Absolutely, I agree. Um, so can you guys share some examples of what your customers plan to do with EventBridge? I think I covered one use case, but any more, we'd love to hear them. Uh, you know, the, the interesting thing about this uh, with EventBridge is I think customers are going to quickly uh, find a lot of ways that they can leverage integrations. I'll give you one example. So as part of the testing with EventBridge, one of our great mutual customers, Cox Automotive, came up with an innovative way to really um, help teams resolve issues faster. So what they've done is, when they're um, seeing alerts come in, in this case, they were testing with New Relic, which is also one of our integration partners. It was triggering alert into PagerDuty. And then with the EventBridge integration, we were triggering a Lambda function that's calling to an S3 bucket. And they have all of their run books stored in S3. Yep. So they are mapping the services that they're monitoring, they're being impacted, to the run books that they have. They're pulling the appropriate run book. And then they post that back into our platform as notes. And here's the thing, our customers are often working across many different environments. So yeah. whether they're in the, you know, our, our UI or they're in the mobile application or in Slack, now all of those runbooks can populate through so that, frankly, they're resolving issues faster. So that's and one And everybody can example. see them no matter where they're working in. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we see lots of possibilities around security and compliance. So we launched a security hub integration at Reinforce a couple of weeks ago. And you know, trying to bring together developers with operations and security, right? That's also a big trend right now. And as you get into these microservice-based architectures... it's not always the easiest thing to do. It is not, and those people are not always talking. So a big part of what we do as a platform is helping teams collaborate, getting everybody together quickly so they can reduce that mean time to resolution, right? So if you think about EventBridge, now maybe I've got a compliance issue that Security Hub notices. Let's use an example of an S3 bucket, public permissions open. Obviously, you want to know about that immediately. Totally. So now we're getting beyond just the alerting notification and using EventBridge to fire the Lambda function. They can make a change to you know, close off access to that S3 bucket or a guard duty finding. You know, Maybe you've got some sort of potential security breach. So lots of ways that we see customers are going to quickly be able to create more automated remediation, as well as things like deploying resources, scaling up additional resources when they have peak capacity. Just awesome a few examples. It's an awesome use yep. case. It's great. Any other examples you want to share, Joe, or that I give like uh, the most basic use case? Yeah, I think one thing I wanted to, to mention was kind of like event-driven architecture's core to how we're building our platform, yeah. Sunshine, our CRM platform, and how we instrument our uh, like infrastructure that supports all of our products. Um, so one big uh, use case is analytics, and specifically real-time analytics, so taking ticket data, or other types of data, streaming that through EventBridge into Hadoop or S3, and then visualizing that in a tool like Tableau um, for uh, you know, heads of support or uh, someone in support operations to be able to staff channels appropriately during high volumes of customer activity. Um, another big uh, use case is uh, just really improving the agent workflow by uh, get, uh, you know, allowing agents to focus on the uh, interactions that matter, so taking care of a lot of those back office uh, systems integrations between applications. Um, and then just uh, workflow automation to make agents' lives a lot easier. Um, and the final one that we're really the most excited about is like bots, uh, NLP, and machine learning. So being able to use uh, conversations and ticket data, streaming that into Comprehend, and for example, you know, pulling in sentiment, sentiment uh, about customers analysis exactly, on those, yeah. cool, um, into an application so that when agents are responding to an upset customer, they know exactly where that customer is coming from, uh, how they feel about the product, and it's and uh, just analyzing that on the whole of like how many support tickets did you get that were positive or negative or whatever the sentiment was. Absolutely, and the real-time use case is really great too, so that an agent always knows how a customer is feeling. It can um, route that ticket or that chat to the appropriate team to handle the issue. That's awesome. We do have a question from the audience. Um, 
probably mostly for Trevor, but feel free to touch on it. Uh, Porter JX wants to know, um, what about security? How are you locking this down to ensure security of the communications between the service and the partners? Yeah, so, uh, so we use, uh, it's fully encrypted using uh, TLS on the uh, communication channel. And um, we also provide VPC endpoints, so you can actually access the service within your private network as well, so. Great. Um, let's see if we got any other questions here. Okay, I don't believe we have any other questions. So where can our customers go to learn more about this new EventBridge service? And then also, like, I have a question, like, how does it work in the GUI of your platform? Like, how am I setting this up on, on both ends of my, I have an account on uh, PagerDuty, I have an account on AWS. How am I setting that up? Just, like, high level. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can talk to the PagerDuty side. It's actually super easy. You're, again, this is all about reducing friction and not spending the time on configuration. So when you go into the PagerDuty platform, and we have a free trial, it's very easy to sign up. When you go in and you're creating a new service that you want to monitor, you, know, you might be setting up an integration with Zendesk, you might be setting up integrations with CloudWatch. Um, EventBridge is no different. We have a, a set of integrations that you can select from. You'll find EventBridge under our extension section. You enter as an of today. As of today. Enter an ID, select your region, give it a name, and then that does sort of the authentication to connect with EventBridge. And of course, you'll, you'll be an AWS console setting up your, your workflow. Yeah, and then once you do that, you have an event bus and EventBridge connected yep. to PagerDuty, and you can go ahead and set a target. Exactly. Cool. Yeah, and on the Zendesk side, thing on the, on yeah, the GUI. pretty much we have a central admin center where you'd configure all of your uh, staffing and billing and all the sort of administrative capabilities. We also, in that same section, have a way to set up AWS to uh, input credentials from your AWS environment, and the events kind of just start streaming from there. Great, so it's like super easy. All right, we do have a question from BSD Guy about pricing. Pricing, yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, pricing's a dollar per million events. Uh, Customers, a dollar uh, per million events. A dollar per million events. Uh, it's just pay as you go, um, like many of our serverless services. Um, and whether it's a partner event or uh, your own events, because we you can publish apps from your own uh, events from your own apps too. I didn't mention that. So with those events, you also pay a dollar per million. And events generated from AWS services. So we're integrated with over a hundred AWS services. Right. And so those events are actually which is free. incredible on launch day, yeah. by the way. Yeah, and th those events are free. So you don't pay for within within. Oh, so Amazon. if you're setting up an event bus to receive events from an event uh, coming from a different place in AWS, yeah, it's free. Exactly. Cool. So it's only a dollar per million events for the partner. For the partner and also for your own app. So if you're for building your an app, app in Got AWS it. and you want to publish events to the bus, you pay a dollar per it. million for those. Super cool. Um, I'm going to post the link to the new EventBridge site in the Great. chat for you all. Um, and I can post uh, pagerduty.com and zendesk.com as well. If, if you guys have any information about like where they can go in their GUI uh, instructions, I can post that in the Absolutely. chat as well. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining me to talk about the brand new EventBridge service today. It's a pleasure having you on stage. Thanks very much. We will see you guys very shortly here. We'll be back with lots more content.